A very pleasant good morning to everyone. What a pleasure it is to be worshiping with you once again. I give God thanks for his mercy, give him thanks for his grace, for his keeping care, for watching over us while we slept and for waking us up this morning. We serve a mighty God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. And so it makes sense for us to commit our ways to him. It makes sense that early in the morning we seek his face. And so this morning I extend a very special welcome to those of you who have joined us here for another morning devotion. If you're joining us on the various social media platforms, whether live or later on, you will listen to this broadcast. We extend to you a warm welcome and we invite you to feel and to know that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And may you not leave here without having experienced the blessing that God has in store for you. For those who are joining us via radio this morning, good morning and welcome to another morning devotion. We sincerely pray that God's blessing will be outpoured upon you. And whatsoever the reason is, whether you got here by invitation or whether by you just came across this link, I want you to know that it's not by accident, it's not by choice, that it's not by luck that you're here. But God has a message in store for you. And we give God thanks for another day. Thank him for the opportunity to be in the land of the living and also for us to give him the first part of our day. This morning, I greet you all from wherever it is that you're listening to us from. And I know that God has sent you here for a reason. And so it is my prayer that the blessing of the Lord will be yours, that you will experience it before you have left here this morning. And so before we get into the word of encouragement this morning, I invite you to bow your heads and to be with me. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence one more time. We give all glory, all honor, and praise unto your name. For you, O Lord, are worthy. You are the Lord of lords, and you are the King of kings. Truly, there is none like you. And so this morning, it is easy for us to bow down and surrender to you and to allow you to have your own way in our lives. And so, Lord, I pray that you will be with your people even now. I pray that you will be with me, Lord, as I open my mouth and begin to speak. And I pray that the words that will come forth, that they will not be my own words, but that they will come from you and that someone will gain a blessing. Hear and answer our prayers now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a song that I that I like to sing. And the words of the song is very simple and it's just repeated over and over again. And it simply says, I don't mind waiting. It says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on your Lord. And I was thinking about the song and, you know, the meaning behind the song. And though it is repetitive and it's the same thing. And I, you know, sometimes I, 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 I admit that I, I get frustrated with, with songs that are so of such repetitive nature that, you know, 
it's the same words being repeated over and over again. But for this one, for some reason, the, the words of the song, even in its simplicity, it resonated with me because I realize how powerful these words are. And when you, you understand that it's not easy to get to a place where you can say, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Why is it not easy? It's not easy because we live in a world of instant gratification and we live in a time where everything is at our fingertips and at the snap of a, of a finger, seemingly that we can have everything that we want. And so for, for you to be able to get to the, to the place of saying, I don't mind waiting on the Lord, then you're saying that, I am saying to you that it's not until you have had to wait on God. It's not until you have seen some things and you have experienced some things for yourself where over and over again and time and time again, God has come through for you in amazing ways. How he has made a way when there seemingly is no way. When you have run out of options, he shows you a thousand ways in which he has that he can solve a problem. That's when you get to the place where you can say, I don't mind waiting. It's If you have never had to wait on God, or if you have a tendency of relying on yourself and making your own way, then you won't understand what I say when the song says, I don't mind waiting. You see, because you don't know what it is like to wait on the Lord because every time a problem comes, you run ahead of God and you, you create your own way. And then sometimes when we make our own way, then we, we attribute that to God. And sometimes you can look at it and like, uh, -uh God didn't have anything to do with that. That was all you. But when you have come to a place where your back was against the wall, when there was nowhere to turn, even when you exhausted all of your resources, all of your energy, all of your time, your effort, and still there was no resolution to the issues that you faced. And then you had to get, you were forcefully brought to a place where you had to rely on God and you had to wait on him. After that experience, then you can say, you know, I don't mind waiting on God. That's when the book of our reference this morning, from where our scripture of reference is coming from, the book of Isaiah chapter 40, so chapter 40 and verse 41 to be exact. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. This is a well-known passage of scripture. And I think we know it so well that it has almost become like a common cliche. It's just something that we recite perhaps from muscle memory, you know, it's like, yeah, be that weight upon the Lord. We, we say it often and we sing it in songs. It's kind of like the Lord's prayer, you know, where you just run through it and it's just words that you know, but it never really, we have never really taken the time to ponder each word and to allow them to, to soak in so that it gets to the point where it awakens our minds and our souls to the fact that the words that we are saying, that they're not just words on a page, but there are deep meanings to every single word that is written there. 
Every word is nourishment to our souls. They are strength for our weakness. They are motivation for us in times of despair and when we are overwhelmed. And might I say that if we truly understand of this, the words of this verse and so many others like it in the Bible, and also if we truly believe the, the words, because you see, it's one thing to know the words, but it's a totally different thing to believe the words that we read. But if we get to the place where we know them and we believe them, then a lot of the stress and the moments of worry, doubt, and fear and the feelings of overwhelm, of being overwhelmed, experiencing the fear of the unknown. We wouldn't have these because we would have understand that waiting on God is not a punishment. And I will say that again, waiting on God is not a punishment, but instead it is a time of our renewal. It is a time of our faith building. It is a time when we get to replenish, get replenished. That is why it said that our strength is renewed. Our faith is renewed. It says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That is strength in your faith, strength in your walk, strength in your resolution that you know that no matter what it is that is happening, no matter what the circumstances may look like, I have a hope and I can fully rely on God that if it's a day, if it is a year, if it is 10 years, I don't mind waiting because I know that God is going to come through for me. And it doesn't matter what anybody says to me. It doesn't matter what circumstances that it is that I am, that I have to face. No matter how hot this battle gets, I can still put up my hand and I can say that I don't mind waiting. I am in God's waiting room. And until he says it's time, then I'm going to wait. But how am I going to wait? And I am so glad that the Bible instructs, instructs us on how we are to wait. He said that we are to meekly wait and murmur not. Because we know that we are guilty of that, that yes, we say that we're waiting on the Lord, but those around us have no peace. They have no joy because we are, we are constantly complaining. We're constantly murmuring about how we have been waiting for so long and still nothing has happened. We have been praying for so long and I, I can't see anything happen. And we begin to question and we begin to doubt and we begin to fear. And then we begin to seek our own way. But this morning I say to you, stay in God's waiting room. Because when you are waiting on God, he is not punishing you. Waiting on God is not a punishment. It is a time that he is using to rebuild you and to bring you to a place where you have total and complete dependency on him. You see, these days we are living in a world of instantness, as I said before. These days you can be in Canada in the morning and by two o'clock or three o'clock, you're in a different country. Sometimes a day later, you're in a completely different time zone. We don't even have to go that far. The joy of cooking a meal for your family that is now replaced by instant noodles and minute rice. It's based on throwing a frozen dinner and in three minutes or less, you have a meal for your family. And so the joy of the family getting together in the kitchen and um, time allowing mom and dad to work together hand in hand one is perhaps washing the rice, the other is cutting up the vegetable. The children are setting the table and, and getting ready for the family meal. Even in your own household, when was the last time 
that you had the time to do that. You see, we are so busy constantly going here and going there. We can't afford to wait. Waiting for the results of a test. Waiting to hear if you got that job. Just the idea of waiting just puts our mind in a different place. It's like, no, 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 I don't want to wait. I, I need to know right now. But I want you to know that God does not work that way. God is on a completely different level. His perception of time is not like ours. And so this morning, I want to say to you that if you're so used to getting things instantly, and everything is in the now. I want it now. I have some bad news for you if you're waiting for, on God. Because the Bible tells us that a day for us is like a thousand years with him. And I'm not saying that he's going to take a thousand years to answer whatever prayer and whatever it is that you're depending on him for. But I also want you to know that if you don't get it right away, and if you've been waiting on him, don't give up. Don't get frustrated. Don't see it as a punishment, but seeing it, see it as a time that God is trying to renew your strength, renew your faith, rebuild your trust in him. Allow God to take the lead. Allow God to use this time to cultivate you and to build that relationship with him and leave all the worrying to him. He has a, a million and one ways of working your situation out. Don't worry about what it is that God is doing because he's doing what he's supposed to do. The only thing that you need to do is make sure that you are doing what you are supposed to be doing. In your time of waiting, what does that look like? Are you still ministering? Are you, is your life still a testimony? Yes, you, you are sick and yes, you have been, you've been praying for healing and it's not coming. But do you know that in your waiting on him to heal you, God is using your circumstances and your situation to be a motivation for someone else, for someone else's faith to be renewed. And so in every circumstance, understand that God has a plan and he has a purpose. And let us remember the words of Isaiah. As it says, that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But this is true. This can only be true if you understand that waiting on God is not a punishment, but it is an opportunity for you to be rebuilt, for you to be renewed, for you to be strengthened as you wait on God. And so may God bless you as we learn how to wait on him, not murmuring, but with thanksgiving. We are relying on him to come through for us in his own time. Mother Rose will now come to us with the closing prayer. God bless you, Sister Angela, for those kind words of encouragement this morning. And let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, dear Father God, our Redeemer and friend. Father God, we come to you giving thanks, dear Father God, for your goodness towards your children this morning. Father God, words cannot express or compare your love, dear Father God, towards us this morning. 
Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, dear Father God, because of whom we are this morning. We only can say thanks, thanks, thanks. Lord, we thank you, dear God, for your presence, dear Father God. We can hear a word this morning, dear Father God. We can receive a word. Father God, we bless you, dear Father God, for your words, dear Father God. Telling us this morning that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength this morning. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Dear Father God, Father God, give us the mind, dear God, that we must wait on you, dear Father God. Father God, we are to ask of you this morning, dear Father God. Father God, we are to trust you, dear Father God. Father God, you are the one that's able to do all things, dear Father God. And Father God, your words this morning, dear Father God, I know it will come to pass. We are to wait, dear Father God, as you have asked us, dear Father God. Father God, you know the answer this morning. And Father God, you will make us happy this morning from our things that will not seem that seems impossible to us. We know that sometimes it seems that there is no end, there is no start. But Father God, you know best, dear Father God. Father God, you will supply us, dear Father God, in all our needs, dear Father God. We look to you this morning, dear Father God, to uplift us, dear Father God, in our weakness. Father God, I'm asking, dear God, to continue to shine your light on us, dear Father. Lord, I'm asking, dear God, to edify and give us, dear Father God, your wisdom, knowledge, and understand that we may grow, dear Father God, and know more about you day by day, Father God. Father God, I ask you will fill us with your spirit this morning. Fill us with your power, dear Father God. We need more of you. Lord, I'm asking, dear God, to help us, dear God, that we will have a heart of thine this morning. Father God, I have you, dear Father God, you will cleanse us, dear God, from all infirmities, dear Father God. Lord, I'm asking, dear God, to remind us, dear Father God, that you are the one that gives good gifts, Father God, and all gifts, good gifts are from above. We pray, Father God, to be humble this morning. Father God, whatever the weight will cause this morning, Father, we know you will come true for us. You will comfort us, dear Father God. You will give us green pastures to lie in this morning, Lord. You will lead us to your righteousness. Father, we'll never lack nothing, dear Father God, because you have your goodness in store for us, dear Father God. Father God, your mercy and your grace will, all, grace will always be with us, Father. Father God, teach us how to love you more and more. Father, we have a hope this morning, Father God, because you are the risen Savior. You can do all things, dear Father God, with your strength, dear Father, your power, dear Father. Lord, this morning I'm asking, dear God, to open every shut door. Move every demonic force, dear Father. Lord, remember the sick ones, dear Father God. Father God, remember those that are down this morning. Father God, I'm asking, dear God, to exalt us, dear Father God. Father God, I'm asking you to teach us how to wait on you, dear Father God, that we can mount up with wings, dear Lord, like eagles. Father God, I'm asking God to increase us, dear Father God, and reward us, dear Father God, according to your will, Father God. Father God, we thank you, dear God, for your many blessings this morning. Father God, remember us all those, those are on this prayer line, dear Father God. Father God, we are here for a purpose, dear Father God. And Father God, you know them. We put them in your hands this morning. 
Father God, every trial that we have this morning, dear Father God. Father God, we left them in your hands, dear Father God. And Father God, I'm asking to lay, as we lay them at your feet this morning, Father God. Lord, I'm asking to take control. Father God, if we are guilty of anything this morning that we have committed, Lord, I'm asking for forgiveness. Anoint us afresh, dear Father God, and let your divine will be done in us. Father God, let us lead, lead, dear Father God, and let us follow. Father God, remember us all. As we wait on you this morning, dear Father God, let us be patient, dear Father God, as you ask us to do this morning, dear God. Let us follow you, dear Father God. Father God, we know that your whole strength will be renewed this morning because you are the man with the plan, dear Father God. Let us trust you. Let us have faith in you, dear Father God. Grant us now this morning your many mercies, dear Father God. And whatever we fail of asking this morning, dear Father God, add it to our prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, we humble ask and say thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. Shalom, shalom, people of God. Indeed, this morning we are so grateful to God for yet another opportunity to be gathered in this fashion. It is not a right, but indeed it is a privilege. I just want to honor the presence of the Lord with us this morning. Indeed, he is a good, good father. He is the giver of life. He is, you know, the, the, our alpha, our omega. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. And we just want to honor him this morning for the God that he is to us this morning. We're just so grateful that we have truly experienced his love to know that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And even in our folly, he continues to show us his mercies. So we would proceed with our parting verse, Psalm 19 and the verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Have a blessed day, people of God. And as you go forth today, take the word with you, remembering that you are light and you are salt and that you are to bring hope to those who are in darkness, that you are not to rest until you see those that are around you come to know him as Lord and Savior, remembering that you are his ambassador and that you are to represent him well. Have a blessed day, everyone.